What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a live read-through. Although this isn't live. Uh, th this is Leaks 4, uh, the second story in the sixth Tales from the Pizzaplex book, I almost lost count there, uh, called Nexi, and the second story is called Drowning, and that is a very strange title for a story. Uh, I'm hoping for some old man consequences parallels here. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting, I think. I've heard that it is a strange story off of Twitter. Like, I, I've heard that there might be a few, um, twists and turns in this. Uh, but I'm excited because drowning is genuinely, like, a big fear of mine. <laughs> so I'm hoping it has, like, a fear factor to it, right? Um, so, yeah, I think we should just get straight into this. This is on the Freddit Discord, if you didn't know. This actually took place yesterday, um, when... I'm recording this and when this is over. Thank you to William Blaine Alton um, for live reading. Um, we're going to be reading through yours and there are going to be a lot of swear words. I'm sorry, I can't help it. It's it, blame William. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get to this. Are you sure this resort attraction is worth the wait? Kara Walsh asked Lola and Francine. Kara is a mic parallel. No, she isn't. She chews sour apple bubble gum. Okay. Uh, good taste, honestly. Totally, Lola said, pushing her dark hair behind her ear. My brother swears by it. He says he's one of the best VR experiences he's ever had. Ooh, a VR. Ooh. <laughs> VR. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, is this going to be, like, under construction? She pulled out a folded up piece of paper from her Forks leather fanny pack. Besides, it's up next on our it I itinerary. Yeah, and it's gotten a full five stars from reviewers. Can't get better than that. Um, can't get better than the five stars, Francine chimed in. Um, a summer plan list, a school supply list, and extra extracurricular activities for the school year list. Things they were going to do at the Mega Pizzaplex list and the whole boatload of others. Uh, they've been in line for 30 minutes. Kara is not having fun. She's more spontaneous and carefree. Um, Lola had them ask each of their parents for a full day pass as a reward for good grades. Um, it said last semester. Uh, old timeline placement, I assume. Um, so Kara shifted again and craned her neck to watch a few kids walk out of the resort exit as they laughed, giving each other high fives. Resort? Oh, okay, so the resort is the, uh, is the VR game, or whatever. Um, oh my gosh, please stop talking about random things. <laughs> this is this is going to be tricky, and it might be a little bit painful for you viewers, but I, I'm sure it's going to be worth it in the end, because I'm sure there's going to be some cool reveals and some great reactions. Um, so Lola is the opposite op optimist of the group, with long brown hair with pretty waves and light brown skin. Diversity win, yay. Um... <laughs> Da, 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 da. Honestly, like, a lot of the first part we can kind of skip. Like, I, of course we need context of what's going on, but we don't really need to know all the details. I'll be doing a, a, a an actual read-through eventually, uh, an audiobook when it actually comes out uh, in two weeks. Uh, she had a habit of pulling at her clothes if she wasn't comfortable in them, even when Kara and Lola always assured her that she looked just fine. Kara, on the other hand, often forgot to be nice. In fact, most of the time she didn't have time to remember. She liked to be on the go, go, go. <laughs> Foxy go, go, go reference. Surely. Oh, that's great. Um, that reminds me of that time um, in alt in Under Construction where it said um, she was having her happiest day. Maya was having her happiest day. Maya was having her happiest day. Uh, probably because she actually was having happiest day because she was dead. Um, but it was ruined because of uh, because of these this big blob or this after an amalgamation parallel. Um, I hate being engulfed by after an amalgamation parallels. Um, oh my gosh, this is so difficult to read. I'm so sorry, but this is hard. Uh, the VR shit is all fucking water. Uh, water park, the beach, or coaster city. Interesting. Just ahead is the actual entrance, and there's a TV screen showing what others are experiencing. Kara wants to go to the water park really badly. Her friends want Coaster City. Uh, interesting here when we're talking about like Fazbear Frights and South and the Pizzaplex, how they feel kind of like they're drawn to 
the locations or whatever. So there was something, I feel like there's something here kind of telling her she needs to go to the water park. Kara is getting snappy and only Francine notices. VR room description. Kara glimpsed inside the VR room as the door slid open. There were normal lights head, uh, highlighting the boxed red room. Four large chairs were lined up together with some kind of weird helmets collect connected by a thick wire. She watched as the group of four before them strolled in and, t uh, and talked to the line attendant. Then the group stood in front of the chairs as a blue laser light scanned down their bodies. Okay. So Lolo is explaining that the laser creates perfect digital versions of themselves as VR characters. Cool. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be stalling a little bit because I kind of need to read ahead to see if information that I say is going to be actual information from the book. Kara realized Zach had dark hair, tan skin, blue eyes and dark freckles. He was definitely cute. I don't care. Okay, ladies. Zack said to them, making sure they were each secured in the seat. The VR chair and helmet work together to help you to integrate yourself fully into the experience. Oh no, under construction moment? <gasps> uh, they control heat sensors, movement and visualization. You can speak to the microphone in the helmet to communicate to others and give a few simple commands. Where you turn your visual direction is where you'll be able to move toward the experience and join in a game or go for a ride. Hyper time. Oh yeah, hyper time is pretty popular. Hyper time is pretty popular. It puts your brain into overdrive and makes you feel like you're experiencing the game longer than usual. Cool concept. Cool concept. Of course, you have to pay more. He leaned down and whispered, It's really just an extra shot of adrenaline through the senses for the player. But, you know, hyper time makes it sound more exciting. I actually heard about this previously and I made a, tw uh, I made a tweet um, saying like it's, it's the same sort of thing that happens in Into the Pit, the first story in the Fazbear Frights where Oswald goes into the ball pit and he's there, he, he's in that 1985 world in, in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for literally like an hour or something and he comes out of the ball pit worried that his dad is going to be waiting for him but it turns out no time has passed at all. So it kind of feels like that with that sort of time dilation um, and that's a common theme that seems to be popping up um, kind of digital virtues versus virtual and then kind of how your brain per perceives different things. It's interesting stuff. Um, it's really just an extra shot of adrenaline through the sensors for the player. That's cool. But you know, hyper time makes it sound more exciting. True. Um, the virtual world has long lines too. Kara is not happy. She just erased virtual people from existence by complaining. What? <laughs> Uh, the virtual sun is warming their bodies. I love that. That's a great detail. They could smell the food. So it, it is an it is an all sense um, arcade game as well, just like under construction. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling they're gonna get stuck in here, or it's gonna that, surely it can't be the same plot as under construction. They're gonna get stuck in here, and they're gonna and the water's gonna rise or something, and they and they're gonna drown. I'm I'm sure that would be a great story. Um, uh, da, ba, da, da, do. Uh, you are a fearless daredevil. Okay. So Kara looks up at another VR monitor on the wall and sees a pool with a small water slide and something at the bottom, a movement, a shift of darkness with long hair. She tries pointing it out, but the screen changes back to Coaster City's roller coaster. Too bad this wasn't virtual reality and people could literally disappear. She wishes death upon the line goers. The context is literally she wishes people would vanish so the wait isn't another 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I gather that. Um, for the next two hours, they do other stuff like laser tag, ice cream floats, photo booths, and karaoke. Wait, didn't ha SB have photo booths? Yeah, Security Breach did have the photo booths that you could hide in. So that's interesting. Um, is this in the Pizzaplex? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming so. Laser tag. Cool, okay. Kara sees Zach and someone else coming up the resort. Ralph is out to say bye to him, uh, so they're on Sean's staff. They have to close down for dinner. She asks Zach to show how, how the resort works. Um, usually, Zach bombs test, but he passed his two-week training. Spelt wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm giving you a hard time. I, you're doing well. Um, so hyper time can be set to 1 to 10 based on how much extended time is desired. Otherwise, it just keeps going and going. Well, let me guess what, uh, what's going to happen in this story. Someone's going to mess up.
the game is going to go on forever, just like Fine Player 2. And they're going to get stuck in there, and they're going to drown. <laughs> I love that my mind just resorts to them drowning as the ending. There's, there's going to be a better ending than, than, than them just drowning, I'm sure of it. Um, it isn't real time. An hour with hyper time could be just five minutes. Here we go with the time dilation. I wonder how much a repeating cycle will feel like. Oh, right. Oh. Oh, so it could go on forever and they would only be in there for like a second. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm getting kind of endgame vibes from this. Avengers endgame. Um, okay. Zach has agreed to let her have fun with the VR. Zach isn't supposed to leave people unattended and has to clock out, but Kara convinces him to go. The scans stay in digital memory until they're cleared overnight, so Kara can just hop right in. She asks for the water park with hyper time for one virtual hour, and we jump to Zach's perspective. That's pretty cool. His mother says he uh, he tends to mush around cute girls, why, which is why he couldn't say no. He gets a message on his walkie-talkie, uh, uh, calling over to Gator Golf. Uh, and he forgets to change the hyper time from zero. There we go. So it's going to go on forever, basically. So she's in a water park and pools surrounded her in every direction. Plus there's doors leading to other areas. Basically the back rooms. Uh, it was as if the water park went on forever. A never-ending giant labyrinth of water fun that continuously generated no matter where she turned. A labyrinth with no exit, a maze with no prize. Hmm. Interesting. Or is she? Stay tuned. Oh, she's all by herself. Oh, okay, so Kara is all by herself. Okay. When Kara had been five, she'd been climbing a tree with her second cousin, Peggy. And Peggy, the Skylar sisters, who had inched out on a tree branch that was too small and the tree limb had cracked. When she fell out of the tree, she landed on her head, ended up in a coma and suffered a traumatic brain injury. Kara never forgives herself for this incident. As she grew older, she had nightmares that something similar would happen to her. Her parents were constantly after her for being so risky which had the opposite effect they wanted from it. So whenever she does the shit she does with all these thrills and uses them to break through her fears and anxieties. Basically the exact opposite of Sam. Right. Um, okay. Foxy squid. <laughs> um, she, look, she goes down a large water slide and in the water something brushes her leg. She doesn't see anything when she gets out, so she decides to walk through the labyrinth. It changes themes and is now a jungle? Okay. There are monkeys. Uh, she does see a parrot. Though. Does that line up with the uh, the fact that there's a monkey animatronic in um, the epilogues? There was a, there, they called out a monkey animatronic. I, Yeah. Uh, he's blue and his name is Dio. Just kidding. Okay. She says hello, moves on. The water is warm and rippled on the surface. There's a giant waterfall with a slide attached to a cliff. I want to go here. She puts her feet under the water and something moves. And then she saw it. A flow of black hair. It was a girl. Kara thinks she may be a mermaid. The girl is gone. Um, could this be related to Charlie? Wait, no, Charlie doesn't even have black hair. Cassidy has black hair. Charlie has brown hair, right? Or we don't really... Well, I mean, technically, we don't know in the games, but in in the novels, she has brown. So, I mean, it could, it could be... Oh, could it be to do with Cassidy? Like, Cassidy... Um, if that, if this girl is Cassidy, like, this girl isn't Cassidy, I'm just putting it out there, like, it, I'm pretty sure it's not Cassidy. But, like, if it was, uh, it would make sense because Old Man Consequences lives by a lake and you have the ending in FNAF World, right, where you drown in the lake and you're Fred, Freddy or you're Golden Freddy or whatever uh, and you drown in the lake. Um, no, sorry, you're Fred Bear and you drown in the lake. So it's kind of like connected to Cassidy in a way. And you also have that in um, Ultimate Custom Night. So interesting if that is Cassidy. It probably isn't. It's probably just a girl with black hair. So I'm looking way too deep into it. Uh, Kara thinks she may be a mermaid. The girl is gone. Um, she wonders if it's a glitch in the VR or just her imagination. And now she's in space. The temperature around her lowers and the pools are different colours of purple, blue and pink. <laughs> a bisexual pool? <laughs> She goes by a pink pool and there she is again. She spots pale hands, dark hair and a flash of grey. She demands answers for the girl. Her black hair drifts around her and she's wearing some kind of greyish fabric that covers her arms and legs instead of a suit. Her eyes are closed. She looks dead. She jumps in to help and her eyes suddenly open and look right at Kara, her dark eyes. Kara nearly drowns 
because a, gra a hand grips her lower leg. She gets out and the girl is still at the bottom looking directly at her. She walks around thinking about what to do and reasons she only just needs to keep playing until time runs out. Uh, she looks into a pool and the girl is there. And reaches a hand up at her. her. Her skin is pale white. She runs away through a donut shop themed area. Frosted donuts floated in a pool and there were donut holes pasted on the white, uh, on the tiled walls. Um, now she's in a beach. Wet sand squashed under her feet as the sound of seagulls cried in the distance. Uh, a light spray touches her feet and she's in an ice cream shop. Giant floating ice cream cups. <laughs> Um, it would have been fun if she didn't see the girl with the black flowing, uh, f black hair floating in the water. I'm sorry, I keep messing up. She keeps running and the girl keeps appearing. It's kind of like the Into Madness effect, right? Always under the water. She remembers there being an emergency button on the arm set. She tries to press it, but legit can't get a sense of herself in the VR chair. That is terrifying as a concept that you know you're in a VR game. Like, you are aware. It's kind of like breaking the simulation, right? Breaking the fourth wall. Um, because if we are truly, as humans, if we are in a simulation, if there is a higher power kind of forcing our every move, etc., uh, and we knew about that, that is a terrifying concept because you cannot do anything about it, right? If we suddenly realize we are in a video game, what do we do about it? We, we, you literally cannot do anything. We are self-aware, but not powerful enough to escape it. And that's something that I think is so terrifying in these sorts of stories where you kind of, you get a sense of, wow, this person is, is like the least powerless person. Like, n not, not in that way. Like, humans are powerless. That's, that's like the whole thing here. So like, it's just, it's, it's quite terrifying all of this VR stuff and I and I hope none of this stuff actually happens in the future. <laughs> it won't, but yeah. Um, yeah, her eyes open wide. She felt totally disconnected from her real body, but how? What the fuck was going on? She said heck, okay. She's feeling her face and body and she felt real. She's panicking. She gazed at the pool around her and everything started to spin. She stepped back and hit a wall. She pressed her hands flat against the tile so she wouldn't fall over. This is really terrifying. She comes down and feels heavy and tired. She's in the pizza tower. It's actually a pizza parlor, but shh. She sits down in the pizza booth. She's cooling, uh, curling up and trying to convince herself none of it's real. She opens her eyes and she's sliding toward the nearest pool. Kara looked down into the water and spotted the girl, I'm assuming. Uh, she sees the girl and freaks out. This isn't okay. I didn't get up. You can't make me do things against my will. This isn't fun anymore, okay? Zack, if you're trying to play a mean trick on me, I'm done now. Please, get me out of here. Anyone? She's screaming for help, like the wishes that are tossed in a well. Oh, wow, that's great. Great writing. She gets back up and continues moving, waiting for the game to end. It feels like hours have passed and she decides to rest in a small alcove in a rocky area with a miniature volcano. It's extra hot in here. She feels very alone. She's never truly been alone before and now she's sad. She's asleep and this is either a flashback or a dream sequence based on the first sentence. Okay, because now she's five. It's about her and Peggy in the big oak tree. Oliver? <laughs> it's it's not Oliver. Uh, Oliver is the big oak tree from um, Coming Home, if you didn't realise. Um, Peggy is her second cousin. This is what Anton was warning me about. Peggy and her family live two towns over and visit once a month. Peggy has black hair. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> She's not the drowned girl apparently though. The story uh, attempts to mislead you into thinking that. Clever, clever. Uh, red herring. Kara is telling Peggy that she's going to be in a lot of trouble if she gets on that branch. Also, yeah, black hair pulled into pigtails and missing one front tooth. Uh, this is what caused her to be this adventurous and whatnot like her present self. It's Peggy who is climbing up the tree and she's trying to convince Kara to join. Peggy stretches herself out on the branch. Her maroon sweatsuit reminds Kara of rotten strawberries. The branch started to break and Peggy asks for Kara's help but she's frozen in fear and tells her to just jump over to her. The branch cracked again. Peggy wrapped both arms around the branch and started crying. Oh gosh, I'm stuck. Please, Kara, I want mummy. Get my mummy. Peggy hits the cemented sidewalk head first and there's blood. 
and I'm there. Yeah, I watched that myself. Pretty fucked up. Uh, the dream's shifting. Water is rising. Oh, and Kara is now back to her present day self. Peggy is going back and forth between herself and the drowned girl. Uh, the drowned girl drags herself underwater and she wakes... Or, the drowned girl drags her underwater and she wakes up. The girl from the pool has dragged herself onto the pavement. The girl no longer looked at peace or serene. In fact, it looked like she was deteriorating. Her black hair was twisted like vines on the rocky alcove. There were a few bare spots on her white scalp. Her dark eyes stared up at Kara. Her skin was discoloured with faint green veins lining her face. Ugh. Her pale lips parted. Her grey garments were tattered and frayed. Her hands were pale, but the nails were smeared with black grime. Um, don't leave me alone. A voice sounded in Kara's head. Kara is being dragged towards her, but she f breaks free and runs off. Cut to Francine. Lola is playing an arcade game where she needs to jump across bridges and collect coins without falling to the ground and being eaten by the giant monster. Francine watches two little kids run away from their older siblings. And it makes her wonder what it would feel like to not be an only child. Her parents pressure her to be like them and join organisations and volunteer work at school, but she isn't confident enough to. With Lola and Kara, she can just be herself and that's and she's happy about that. Lola died and now she's complaining about Kara. Right. Francine is more the neutral of the two and now understands that both Lola and Kara just prefer to do other things. Um, they both like to have their own way. Lola sends her a text and now they're looking for her. Cut back to Kara. Um, don't leave me alone. That keeps repeating in Kara's head. Pirate ship. Uh, not to mention the stupid voice won't shut up. Will you stop already? She yelled out. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. She covers her ears and screams, which makes it stop. She now plans to hopefully find an exit and the voice is back. For what it seemed like the next few hours, she goes through every doorway she finds, but it only leads her to different themes. Oh my gosh. Wow. Finally, she noticed the door in a tiled wall that looked different. Its paint is faded and chipped. Its handle is rusted and discoloured. She opens it. She stood in the doorway of an old house. She enters it and the puddle she steps in on the floor is icy cold. Um, the house is dark minus a few candles. It's mouldy and leaking water. To the right is a living area with waterlogged furniture. To the left is another damp sitting room with a cracked uh, brick fireplace. Kara, I need help. Help me. Uh, they're trying to bait us into thinking it's Peggy. That That is, like, it's it's pretty good writing. Like, I wish I wasn't told straight off the bat, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, their voices eerily sound the same. I mean, I, I mean, I guess this is what happens when I read leaks and, and the spoilers, right? Obviously, uh, it, it's a better experience if you're reacting to it uh, while you're reading it. Um, but I choose to I choose to read the leaks. So, yeah, the voices eerily sound the same. She feels so scared. Then she remembers something. Kara had played plenty of video games in her life. There was always a goal for, for the game she played. Save the princess. Finish the maze without dying. Collect all the treasure. Interesting. Is it Cassidy? Is it Cassidy? No way. Absolutely no way. I mean, it might not be Cassidy. It could be a parallel to Cassidy. But uh, we have something going on in, uh, you know, a, a video game or like a, a VR game. It's in it's in a VR game, uh, just like how Princess Quest is in an arcade machine. Um, I guess we have going through different rooms uh, and kind of and and hmm. it's a tricky one. Uh, there's the whole second section of Princess Quest, which I'm thinking about. Which is Ultimate Custom Nights uh, and FNAF World's Old Man Consequence Lake, right? So that's all connected there. There's definitely something going on with Cassidy and the Princess Quest minigames in this story. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's going to tell us more about Cassidy and Princess Quest. I freaking hope so. Uh, it's, it's even just cool that it mentioned Save the Princess. I love that because it has a, a dual meaning. It... It basically, um, yeah, Mario saving the princess, but it's also saving the princess like we do in Security Breach. History repeats itself. Maybe this experience was the same way. She now thinks if she were to help the strange girl in the water, it would get her out. She hadn't been able to save Peggy. Maybe this would be a chance to save someone else who needed help. Cool. 
Uh, she's certain she must save this girl. She's determined to do this and to go home as well as release the guilt as she carries for Peggy's incident. She opens the door to the little girl's bedroom drenched in water. A strange music box. It's a music box with a carousel horse. She tries closing the box, but it opens again. Uh, she finds an old photo. There's the girl with black hair as well as a man with brown and another black-haired woman. It's old and the clothes are from a different time period. Okay. Uh, the photo is flooded. Water is... <laughs> Water is pouring out of the photo? What is this? This is crazy. I mean, this is in a VR game. Okay, let's, let's just remember that. Uh, she goes up the stairs and now the house is flooding. The staircase seems to length as she lengthen as she runs up it. Uh, she really is Mario making it up to the top. Uh, there is another door with the glowing light. The door. She reaches it, but it won't open and the water crashed down on her. But she manages to get it open and the water recedes. Uh, the girl is in the bathtub. She reaches her hand out and the girl takes it and pulls Kara underwater. She's no longer in a tub and she's fighting with a girl whose green veins have gone darker and she also has black teeth. Wait a second. Is this Eleanor? <laughs> is this Eleanor? I've seen these types of fights before in the, in the Stitch Rave Singers. I've seen Larson go through many different memories before. <laughs> okay. Just saying, I have seen Eleanor been disguised as another child before. Especially a child which I think... Oh no, black curly hair. Yeah. Who had black curly hair. Rennell. If this is Eleanor... <laughs> maybe this is why this one was done first. Because Anton was like, you know what? This one's got Eleanor in it. You should start with this one. People will go crazy. Uh, no, but seriously, is this Eleanor? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doubting myself now. It could be anything at this point. Like, what is, what is this girl? What is this girl? Um, okay. She breaks free and discovers she's in a huge pool with the surface miles away. She feels tired and the uh, girl tries to grab her, but she manages to make it to the top. She's back in the water park. Mum, I want to go to the skate park. I'm tired of skateboarding in front of the house. She's fighting with her mother about going because her mother has a meeting and she doesn't want Kara to go alone. By the way, Kara is now 10 in this in this memory. She snaps at them for being so protective and having a tight grip on her. And when she thinks of Peggy, she gets scared or sad. In her nightmares, instead of Peggy falling, it's Kara. Um, she decides to walk alone to the skate park and watches the other kids do, do cool tricks. She tries to do what they're doing and it works at first, but then the board rolls out from under her and she crashes hard. Her elbow and legs are bleeding, but she gets back up again and goes again. This time she lands on her arm and seemingly breaks it and then the blood moon rises or some shit. The sky above her gets dark and dirty water starts rushing down the ramp. The kids run away to escape the water while water is now up to Akara's waist. She's in a whirlpool. And then she woke up to me. Stop, stop with this. Uh, to her being dragged towards the water again. Don't leave me alone, Kara. Uh, she kicks the girl back into the water and the lights in the water park. They flicker. Back to Francine. Lola is pissed. It sounds like Lola and Kara complain often and Francine is always in the middle of it. Lola's brother arrived and now Lola is asking Francine for advice. They decide to tell her brother what they believe is the truth. Kara said she was going to the restroom and to tell an employee about Kara being missing. Uh, apparently loads of kids go missing in this place. Ooh. Uh, cut back to Kara, who has tried everything she possibly can to leave. She begins crying and believing she deserves it. Um, Kara mostly did whatever she wanted and didn't care about the repercussions. And now she is paying the price by roaming this isolated place with a dead girl who is trying to keep Kara with her. She opens the next door and nearly falls into the void. There is nothing. I'll, I'll save my thoughts for the end. Ah! She proceeded to go uh, to do the dumbass thing horror protagonists do. Is that all you got? And immediately she is dragged towards the nearest pool. She goes through the next door and enters a mirror maze. Um, wasn't there a mini mirror maze in the fourth closet? That was, that was connected to Susie though. Uh, she's so pale, her freckles stand out. Her hair is wild, her lips are chapped. She is effed up. And now water is rising, the door is gone. Lola and Francine are on the mirrors saying mean ass shit about Kara. Cool, I like this. 
Um, she thinks so lowly about her friends that she doesn't recognize anything wrong with what they're saying and immediately assumes they're real. Oh. Uh, <laughs> go to the resort. I'm there. Kara screamed at them. Please, I need your help. They're literally talking about how much you suck and that they should ditch you. Do you really think they're real? Um, no, no, stop. Lola and Francine aren't like this. Kara said as she shook her head in denial, her eyes watering. And now it's her parents on the glass. She's 15. Her parents are talking about how disobedient Kara is and how grounding her won't do anything. Um, her father's name is Martin. <laughs> Probably not Martin Copper, but that would be strange because this is also a story connected to water. Um, anyway, she apologizes to her family saying she'll never do risky stuff again and she'll do whatever they say, causing the drowned girl to return. Kara, don't leave me alone. The room has flooded again, but she realizes the water surface is actually right where she is. Too bad it's covered by glass. She bangs on the glass, causing it to break open, but she accidentally cuts herself on it and she bleeds. The drowned girl peeks up her head up from the hole. She walks away and now the themes of the rooms are becoming basically the same. Just dark doors that lead to more tiled rooms and plain pools with slides. She eventually reaches an area with tall water slides and a ton of room between the pools. One of them is really tall and is actually coming from the top of the ceiling, which she thinks may lead to an escape. The issue is that there's no stairs. The only way up is to climb the stairs. Don't leave me alone, Kara. Of course, the pool at the bottom of the slide has the girl in it. Right. I see. I see. <laughs> Suddenly... Her grey skin is pale again, and there's no more green veins or black teeth. Her, her black hair looks healthy. She was actually pretty, Kara realised. Reminds her of Peggy. This isn't my place, she told her. I'm sorry you're here, but it's time for me to be back in my own reality. I miss my best friends. I miss my parents. I miss my life. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Kara begins to climb. Cut to Francine and Lola. The girl at the information desk... Calls for Kara Walsh and minutes pass. Lola is freaking out and Francine is trying her best to stay calm. Then they spot the kid from the resort VR attraction, Zach. It's been 20 minutes. Zach isn't worried because he thinks he put a number in for the hyper time and that Kara has already left. And he's kind of realizing something is wrong now because she isn't answering texts or anything. Back to Kara, she's climbing. Uh, she begins to feel a wave of nausea, but powers through it. She's climbing. She nearly slipped, but recovered. She plans to listen to her parents and be more encouraging with her friends once back home. She looks down and, come to me, Kara. The voice is now heavy, deep, and terrifying. She falls. She lands hard. Her legs are gone. Not literally gone, but they're, okay, they're broken. Uh, ah, interesting reaction to falling and breaking your legs. Kara, death shall come. She blinks rapidly in stunned shock and agony. <laughs> uh, the girl from the pool is pulling herself out the water and her creepy appearance is back. She grabs onto both ankles and drags Kara into the pool. Cuts to Francine. They make it back to the VR booth and Zach realizes what he's done and turns hyper time and the water park off. Oh, I see. They go to Kara and talk to her. She doesn't respond. Francine looks at Kara's face. Her eyes were wide with dark circles under them. Staring at nothing, her skin's pale, her lips are dry and parted. Francine slapped a hand to her mouth to keep from screaming. What did I just read? <laughs> no, seriously, what did I just read? <laughs> I don't, I don't... I don't get it. I don't like it. Was it just the way that it was written on the Discord? I I, I don't want to like. It's it's very difficult to um to like live read, and you did a great job. Like you you did describe everything there, probably. But uh, I don't get it. I uh, maybe I skipped a lot. Like the girl from the pool is pulling herself out the water, and her creepy appearance is back. She grabs onto both ankles and drags Kara into the pool. They make it back to the VR booth and Zach realizes what he's done and turns hyper time and the water park off. They go to Kara and talk to her. She doesn't respond. Francine looks at Kara's face. Um, okay, right, yes. So they're in the VR booth thing now. 
They go to Kara and talk to her. She doesn't respond. Francine looks at Kara's face. Her eyes were wide with dark circles under them, staring at nothing. Her skin's pale. Her lips are dry and parted. Francine slapped a hand to her mouth to keep from screaming. So she turned into the into the drowned girl? I'm so confused. <laughs> Can you tell? Is this like a Jeremy st a story where like you get taken over by the VR? I don't get it. I don't... Am I this... Am I dumb? Did I miss something? I feel like I must have missed something. It feels like such an empty plot. Maybe, okay, either I'm missing something, which is probably the case, or there was something missing from this, but I'm like, I've heard people like get it on Twitter. Like people have been like, this is a good story. It, people have said this is not the greatest story. People have said this is the best story yet, but I like, I don't, I can't come to a conclusion because I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe I should wait to read the audiobook, but I don't get it. I'm actually going to ask the people on my server, or I'm going to have a look at uh, what's going on in my server to do with um, this story because I just don't understand the plot of it. Okay, so um, shout out to the people who are talking in my, in my Discord, obviously, <laughs> uh, because we're going to go through this. If you want to join my Discord, it's in the link below. Um, in the description, uh, people are saying this is certainly a tale from the Pizzaplex. Um, Cassidy Afton is so Cassidy was the girl. Okay, so here's a summary, uh, a summary, a summary from Lily Froggo, um, or Froggy. Uh, Kara used the adrenaline feature of the VR thingy which made time go super fast for her, but the idiot attendant forgot to set a number for how long she should be in the thing, so it just went endlessly. Right. So, what was like... Well, I, I don't know how long it actually was, but what was like, I guess, half an hour between uh, the attendant going out and in and like resetting everything? It, what was 30 minutes there was like 30 days or something. <laughs> For Kara, it was it was a, it was a much longer time in inside than out, right? In the thing, girl with long black hair compared to a princess. I mean, I guess, like I I don't. It was just like a reference, right? It was just like you gotta save the princess. Oh, I get, okay, I get it. Okay, I I get what you mean there. You gotta save the princess, as in you gotta save her. She's the princess, she is Cassidy, they have black hair. That does make sense, I guess. Needing to be saved constantly, ask for her help, while also terrorizing her. Since the adrenaline was active, she spends hours in there for what is only 20 minutes IRL, there we go, and by the time her friends find her and get her out, she's already died and her body has deteriorated. Has her body deteriorated, like, faster than normal time is it like because there was only 20 minutes there but did it was it like a a body that looks like it had been there for like 20 hours or something like was it was it deteriorating quick like i don't know uh duckman says cassidy story tldr cassidy chooses violence and fucks up some random girl and somehow kills her irl body by drowning her in a virtual pool through super nano natural shenanigan shenanigans so, if that's the case, it will be connected to Old Man Consequences, because the drowning ending. Like, we, we all saw this coming, right? Story called Drowning, there is a drowning ending in FNAF World, they have to be connected in some sort of way, surely. Uh, and now we have Cassidy here, like, it's all adding up, I think. So, okay, so it, it's an okay story. I just, I, there was a lot going on i think when when it could have been like really simple and just kind of to the point horror um i think there was just too much happening i think that, that's why i was getting confused as well because like yeah there were too many details i think i don't know that's just me um maybe it'll be better when i actually read the story firsthand uh, in fact I'm, I'm saying it will be better 
a hundred percent when I read it firsthand, and that's always going to be the case for leaks. Like you, you must be prepared for this sort of thing when you, when you go to read the leaks. Um, uh, but thank you to to William in the Discord. I don't know if your name's actually William or if you're putting that as like a troll to say like William Afton because your name is actually William Alton. Anyway, uh, let me just see what else people are saying and then we'll go. I'd also like to point out to the class, Great Escape Golden Freddy. Yeah, no. <laughs> that is literally just an Illumix thing. Um, interesting concept though, like if you're, if you're thinking about that. Um, Cassidy Victim is dead. Shadow Libra says. Cassidy Victim is dead. Hmm. Is Cassidy Victim dead? Surely it must be right. I mean, I mean, like, it has been for a long time. I'm not saying by any means Cassidy is the bite victim, but uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think of, like, what did the story tell us? It doesn't really tell us anything. I guess. Hmm. Uh, it makes Cassidy, uh, the one you should not have killed, even less likely. Because Cassidy is highly implied to be a girl, plus the suit argument doesn't work either. I mean, that's just, that's very subjective. <laughs> uh, what th this person is talking about, um, the Golden Freddy suit, like people are probably talking about the Golden Freddy suit when they use he, him pronouns for the one you should not have killed. Uh, but that's kind of subjective if you think the suit argument works or not. I personally think it could work. Like, obviously, the one big stickler point for Cassidy being um, the one you shouldn't have killed is the fact that there are he, him pronouns. And every time we've seen someone called Cassidy, uh, they've been a girl. <laughs> um, but, like, I don't think this changes much because we already kind of knew both of these things, right? Um, oh, my gosh. This... Okay. <laughs> we move on from that. That is... Sick fan art. Was that created by Margot? Wow, shout out. <laughs> shout out. Uh yeah, cool. Okay. Boring story. I, I I think I think it's okay. I think I kind of agree with you. I think it's probably gonna be better when I read the actual thing, but um Yeah, why does Cassie even exist? And if she has nothing to do with Golden Freddy at all, then it's pretty strange to then make her yellow with a shadow doppelganger and have Princess Quest to end with her ignoring the advice of the wise old red man to instead continue. You know what? I'm going to make a video about that soon. Anyway, <laughs> um, there's a little teaser for one of my upcoming videos. Uh, that is going to be very controversial. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry this was a little bit messy, but it usually is. So stick around if you want more mess like this. Uh, no, usually we have nice videos uh, as opposed to now. I have low battery, so I'm going to go. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. Goodbye.